Hey everybody, my name is Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit and review a lot of different parts. That way we can try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing today on our 2020 BMW X5. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Stealth trailer hitch receiver with the towing kit. So if it were me and I had a BMW and I wanted to tow a trailer or use some accessories, I would honestly be pretty concerned with how a hitch would look on the back of it because got a really good looking vehicle. You really don't want a big hitch hanging down below here, taking up a bunch of space. And every time you look at it, you just see an eyesore. And that's where the stealth hitch is going to come into play. And that's because whenever you're not using it, it's going to be completely hidden. You're not even going to know it's there. And so today on ours, we actually have the towing kit. So right now we have our ball mount in. So if you were towing a trailer, this is the one you would pop in. And the other attachment is just a two inch by two inch receiver tube. So if you had a bike rack or a cargo carrier or something like that, you would pop this one in. So just to give you an example though, on what your BMW is gonna look like whenever you're not using it, you'd simply just pull your attachment out. And as you can see, it's not visible at all. You're not even gonna know it's there. And whenever you are ready to use your hitch, it is just as easy. You're gonna take your attachment and just slide it into place. Now, I will say, if you don't plan on doing any towing at all, you can get the hitch with just this receiver tube. That way you can still use your bike racks and your other accessories. I wanna mention though, if you Think you're going to do some towing in the future or anything like that i would highly suggest getting the kit and that's because this receiver tube here is not rated for towing at all so you can't put a regular ball mount in here until your trailer down the road you would have to get the special attachment here and tow that way so regardless of what accessory you're using whether it be the receiver tube or your ball mount what's cool is it actually locks so you can lock this into the hitch so not only does that provide us with a safety feature kind of a backup you know you got it locked it's not going to go anywhere but it's also going to help prevent theft so you're not going to have to worry about someone running off with your accessory and this is what the lock looks like and it's on the left hand side of your vehicle on the driver's side but once you put your accessory in you would simply just push this all the way in and it'll lock it down then whenever you're ready to take it out you just grab your key and unlock it. it even has a little rubber cap too so you can put that over it and help keep it protected since there are quite a few components here let's go ahead and just talk them through one by one and we'll first start with our receiver tube opening here it's going to be two inches by two inches that's a super common size and a ton of different types of accessories will work with it it's going to have a reinforced collar for extra strength, and I think it looks pretty good too. It's going to have that standard 5 8 pinhole. Now keep in mind, a pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can get it right here at eTrailer. This is going to have a 600 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating, and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on it. And It's a pretty high number. You should be able to use pretty much whatever size bike rack or cargo carrier that you'd want to. Now what's awesome about this is it's how far it comes out. If this hitch stayed on here permanently, it would probably be pretty annoying, but the fact that this pops down and we can remove it makes this a pretty awesome feature actually. Because that hitch comes out pretty far, it's gonna give us a ton of clearance. So you shouldn't have any problems at all using pretty much any folding accessory. Whenever you put it in that upright position, shouldn't have to worry at all about it touching the back of your X5. Now let's go ahead and take a couple of measurements. If we go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our bumper, looks like it's gonna be right at about two inches. And we kind of talked about that. Since the pin hole is well beyond our bumper, uh, you shouldn't have any issues with those folding accessories. If we go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be right at 14 and a half inches, and that's pretty high off the ground, so I think 
as long as your accessory has a straight shank or one with a rise, you shouldn't have really anything to worry about. So let's go ahead and talk about the tow package, your ball mount here. And this is what you would use whenever you wanted to tow your trailer. This thing is solid steel, so it's very strong. It'd give me a little peace of mind knowing I got something so heavy duty back here when I'm pulling my trailer down the road. And it's gonna come with a two inch ball. It's a really common size. If you need a different size ball, no, no big deal really. You can always change it out for a different size if that's the case. And as far as the weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 600 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. So again, the amount of weight pushing down. And it's also gonna have 8,000 pound maximum gross trailer weight rating. And that's gonna be the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do always suggest, never a bad idea to grab your BMW's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your X5 can pull that much weight safely. So go ahead and take a couple more measurements. If I go from the ground, we'll just measure to the top of the ball. That's right at 19 inches. So that's about perfect, honestly. That's where you want to be for your trailer and your X5 to ride level. And maybe we'll go from the bumper just to the center of the ball. So that's about six inches. So that gives us enough distance here to not have to worry about our trailer contacting the back of our car or anything like that. I will say one thing I'm really not too crazy about is the safety chain loops. And that's this right here. So you have one on each side of your hitch and they're a little tricky to get to they sit a little further back and they're relatively small not really a huge deal since you only hook your chains up once and undo them once but if you have a really large hook i think you might have some issues but kind of your normal or standard size one like this shouldn't really give you any problems as far as getting it in and out and the wiring that you need to hook your trailer up to, that's also going to be completely hidden as well. It's going to be located just under our bumper right here in this location. So here's our wiring connector right here and it's actually a seven way. So that's a common connector and you can hook up your larger trailers to it, things of that nature. But what's great about it is it also comes included with an adapter. So this is seven to four flat connector that's another very common size so regardless of what type of connector your trailer has you know you'll be covered since the wiring does provide us with a seven-way connector not only is it going to give us our basic lighting functions like your turn signals your running lights and your brake lights but it can also give us a few more it'll provide us with that 12 volt auxiliary power say if you're pulling a pop-up camper or something like that with a battery on it that 12 volt power will charge it as you're going down the road and it also gives us the ability to use a electric brake output so like a brake controller for example if you're towing a larger trailer with brakes you can hook up a brake controller and get those brakes stopping on the trailer side and it's also going to give us the ability to hook up our reverse lights and whenever you're not using your accessory at all, they actually come with a really thick rubber plug that you can put into that opening there in the hitch. That way it'll help keep it nice and clean and prevent any dirt and debris from getting inside. So at the end of the day, you really do get the best of both worlds. Not only do you have a hitch, but you're not gonna be able to notice it and you're gonna be able to maintain that clean BMW look. If it were me, I think I would go with the towing package because you'll be able to pull your trailer, you'll have your lighting functions, and you can use the receiver tube for your accessories. However, if you don't plan on towing a trailer at all, you can just get the hitch alone and that'll work out perfect for those of you that just want a bike rack or a cargo carrier. So regardless on what you're doing, there's a package or a setup available for you. So really do have all the bases covered, something you can't go wrong with. Now, as far as the installation goes, I will say it is pretty time consuming. There's a lot to it. We have to remove the fascia and the tail lights to get our hitch up and it's relatively involved. So just be patient. As long as you follow along with me, we can do it together. 
I'll show you a few tricks and tips along the way to save you a little bit of time and make life a little bit easier. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put everything on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our BMW. And what we're gonna to need to do is get our rear fascia removed. That way we can get our components installed. So I went ahead and opened up our hatch. And the first thing we're gonna to have to do is just pop off one of the side panels here. So if you look on each side of our BMW, right here we're gonna have these little panels that we need to pop off. Really straightforward, you kinda of just grab behind them with your hand, release them, and set it off to the side. And the same deal for this one over here, just pull down on this lever, and that will release as well. So now inside of our car, if we fold down our back seats, just behind them, you can see these little plastic covers here. What we're gonna need to do is open this cover up so you can use a pick or a flathead screwdriver, something like that. If you fold that up underneath it, it's going to expose a T30 Torx bit screw. So I'll grab our tool here and pull this out. And with that removed, the other side set up the same way. So I'll just repeat that process over there. Now here at the back, we can remove our floor covering. So if you lift up on it, you can see right there, there's gonna be a little shock and we need to release that. So these have almost like a little metal band that runs along there. You could take a flat head or a pick. And what you're gonna do is just kind of pry that out then you can simply just push on that shock and it'll pop right off so now that we have that free you can carefully slide our panel out and set it off to the side now we can remove this plastic panel right here it's going to be held in place with seven plastic push pin style fasteners just along the edge of it Get these out, you can take a flathead screwdriver, a pick, a trim panel tool, whatever you might have. You're gonna pry underneath the head of it. Then you can simply pull that fastener out. So use that same technique to get all of those removed. So once you have all them fasteners removed, you can simply just pull up on our panel. We'll set it to the side and that'll give us the room we need to remove this plastic threshold right here because the fasteners holding it in are on this inside edge. So now if you look on this inside edge, we're gonna have a total of four T20 Torx bit fasteners. So we'll pull those out. And once we have all these removed, we should be able to lift up on our threshold and completely remove it. We'll slide it out and set it off to the side. So now on the passenger side, we're gonna to need to remove our tail light, but to get access to the hardware that's holding it in, we're gonna to have to remove a couple things. If you look right here, there's like a small square and a little plastic cover. If you could take a pick and simply just kind of pry on that cover, it'll, it'll pop out. So what we're gonna do is grab our eight millimeter socket and remove that bolt. Then we can remove this little plastic cover here. So you're gonna get a trim tool and kind of work behind it, kind of pry out and back towards the back of the vehicle. Kind of feel those clips release. And these are the fasteners that was holding it in. So when you pull this out, we can then set it to the side. So now on the passenger side panel here, if you move towards the front, just behind our rear seats, you can see there's a little plastic round cap here. We're gonna pop that out. And that will allow us to gain access to this 10 millimeter bolt. 
And so I'll grab my socket and pull it out. So if you look at the bottom edge of our passenger panel here, we'll have two pushpin style fasteners. So we'll grab our flathead and get those removed. One right here as well. We'll do the same thing to get that one out. So I did happen to find another fastener and that's kind of hanging our panel up. So if you look right here, this little portion, if you kind of pull it towards the front, it'll kind of just pop out. And if you just lean it back a little bit, right here on the inside edge, there's gonna be a pushpin style fastener that we need to pull out. So with that pushpin free, you should be able to kind of grab the panel, lift up on it. And it actually looks like at this point, there is a wire that we need to disconnect that's going to our 12 volt outlet there. So on the back side, we'll pull that off and then that should release our panel. See that little red tab? Just with your fingernail, just kind of push it back. Then you're able to push down on the center of the connector and release it. And there's also one more wire as well going to just a little interior light. These can be kind of tricky to disconnect because they're so small. So what I'm going to do is just remove the light. So you see on this end, there's a tab there. And if you kind of pull it towards you or towards the back of the vehicle and push down at the same time, it'll kind of free that light from the panel and kind of just let it hang there. And then we're able just to kind of swing our panel out of the way for now. Now we can go ahead and remove our tail light nut. So if we look just above our fuse box, you can see there's a little opening there. You may have a little carpeting in the way. You can kind of just peel that down. But that being said, it, there is a 10 millimeter nut that we're going to pull out. Now over here on the driver's side, it's going to be a little bit easier to remove that tail light nut, the same one we did on the passenger side. If you just kind of reach up through the little access panel that we popped off earlier, and you kind of pull down on this sound deadening material, you can see that 10 millimeter nut right up here. So once you locate it, go ahead and grab your socket and remove it as well. Now if you look right here, you can see this little plastic cover here, just on the inside of our tail light. We're going to remove that. And it just pops out so you can kind of grab the top, grab the bottom, kind of wiggle it, and pull it free. Set that to the side. And then we can remove our tail light. So the, we're going to have three fasteners. First one will be this right here. That's an 8 millimeter bolt. Pull that out. We're going to have two more. And these will be a T30 Torx bit. You pull this out, you kind of want to put your other hand on the tail light. That way it don't accidentally fall out. But once you have it out, what you can do is just simply pull it outwards. And we're going to have to disconnect it. So. I'm going to flip this around to where you can see there's a red tab. Just going to pull it out. Then you can push down in the center there and completely disconnect it. So now the tail light's free, I'll set it off to the side. And then we're simply just going to repeat the same process on the driver's side to get that light out as well. So now we can move over to our rear wheel wells. Now, what you want to do before we start working over here is get some painters tape and kind of tape up around the edges. That way we don't have to worry about scratching up our paint on accident. So I went ahead and did that. And what we're going to do is this little plastic trim piece. We need to release that. That way we can get to a bolt underneath it. So pretty straightforward. Kind of just grab it, the bottom corner there and pull 
towards you. You don't need to take it completely off. Just a few clips. So about there is good. So here you can see the clips that we were releasing. That was what was holding this in place. But once you get it kind of pulled back, you can see right there, there is a eight millimeter nut and we need to run that out. So grab my socket, pull that out. And then I'm just going to repeat the same process over on the other side. Now, if we move to our reflector lens here, we need to remove that so we can get to a bolt beneath it. And these are just gonna pop out. So you can take your hand or a trim tool, pry it out this way and very carefully pull it out completely. We'll set it to the side. And with the reflector out of the way, you can see we have an eight millimeter bolt there. Grab our socket, pull it out, and we'll do the same thing over on the other side. Now underneath of our BMW here on the bottom side, we're going to need to remove all of these eight millimeter fasteners. Now there's quite a few of them holding on the bottom of our fascia, as well as these protective panels, and they all need to come off. So grab our socket, and we'll start removing each one of them. Got them all out of the panel, you can take that off. Then I'll just continue to work along the edge of our fascia here. Continue to work along our edge here. We'll get our last two over here on this edge. Now, with an extra set of hands, we can actually remove our fascia. So, you want to start in the corner here, and what you're going to do is just carefully kind of peel it back. You can see it's just releasing itself. And once we kind of get up into our tail light pocket, there's going to be some plastic fasteners there. You can take a trim tool or something and kind of push down on the middle of them. They should release. And whenever you're doing this, just be patient. Take your time. You don't want to break anything. So. These cars are put together pretty tight, but they will come apart. And usually when these pop off, they'll just almost come off completely. So be careful when you're doing this. And once we get to this point, we can just continue to work our fascia off and be careful because you might have a connector. In our case, we have one right here on the passenger side of our vehicle and we're gonna disconnect that. So to do that, we're gonna have two tabs here on the ends, kind of pinch them in together. be able to pull it apart. Then we could set our fascia off to the side somewhere safe where it won't get damaged. So now underneath our vehicle, in a moment here, we're going to lower our exhaust a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is use a strap to help support it. If you need a strap, you can find it here at E-Trailer. I'll just kind of run it on each side of our exhaust here and get it tight. That way it doesn't drop completely down and we can kind of control how fast and how, how far down we let it down. So over here on the passenger side, we're gonna have a little wire that is secured to the bottom of our bumper beam. So I'll just take a trim tool or a flathead and pull it out. And on both sides of our vehicle, 
we're going to have a 13 millimeter nut right here that acts as an exhaust hanger. So I'll grab my socket and pull that out on each side of our BMW. On top of our bumper beam, here on each side of our vehicle, we're gonna have this little plastic panel. Need to remove that. It's gonna be held in place with two push pin style fasteners. And this isn't going to just kind of pop right out. What you're gonna to have to do is, if you see this little indentation here, kind of get a screwdriver it in there there's this little plastic fastener that you just need to kind of separate so just going to keep working up on it so I have it released if you flip it over you can see that's what I was trying to pry on you kind of want to push them in and once you have it in you're able to pull up on the panel. So do the same thing on the other side to get it removed as well. So we're gonna have a plastic panel connected to our bumper beam. And this is the kick sensor for your automatic lift assist here at the tailgate. So we're gonna need to disconnect this wire here in the center. And to do that, you can just push down on this tab there and release it. I'll just kind of let this wire hang. And now we can actually remove our plastic panel itself. To get the panel off, we're gonna have 12 five push pin style fasteners here along this top edge. So get our tool and pull those out. And once we have it removed, we can set it off to the side. And now we can come in and actually remove our metal bumper beam. So. We're gonna have a total of four 18 millimeter nuts on each side of our bumper beam. So get our socket and extension and pull all those off. Two up top, two on the bottom. I'll get those off on the other side as well. That'll be the last thing supporting it. And once we have those off, we can carefully pull it towards us and set it to the side. Now we can grab our hitch and line up the holes with it, with the factory studs that was holding our bumper beam on. And for those of you that are wondering, we will not be reinstalling the bumper beam. The hitch will take place of that. And with that being said, we're just going to take the factory hardware that was originally holding that bumper beam on and reinstall it. Once we have all of our nuts on and tight, what you're going to want to do is make sure you have the hitch centered where you want it because you can slide it a little bit from side to side. So we'll just put that about right in the middle and we'll hold it there. And we can take our socket and just snug everything down. So now that we have the hitch tight, you wanna take a step back and look at it, make sure it's exactly where you want it, nice and centered. Once you verify that is indeed where you want it and it is centered, we're gonna come back to these bottom two nuts. We're going to remove those. The top two will keep the hitch in place. Then what we're gonna do is grab the included brackets and these are labeled left and right. So make sure you have the appropriate one. Right side is the passenger side, left side is the driver's side. And these are just gonna slide over those studs to take our nuts and just loosely install them. The way this is gonna work, these two holes in the bracket are gonna line up with our exhaust hanger here. So this little dowel is gonna go through this first hole 
and this opening here is going to line up with the second hole. So you're going to want to take the included bolt, get a flat washer, come from the bottom of the exhaust bracket, and line everything up. Once you have it in there, you can take the included flange nut. We're going to tighten this down by hand. Make sure everything is lined up appropriately. Come back and tighten down the two nuts. Then I'll just repeat the same process over on the other side. And then we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware holding our hitch down to the specification found in our instructions. Then we can move over to our exhaust hanger brackets and we're going to tighten down that bolt and the nut. So hold the nut with a half inch wrench and use a half inch socket to snug everything up. We'll do that on the other side as well. Now we can go ahead and set up our latch mechanism. So if you have the hitch that does not have the tow package, you'd simply just slide this up, line up the holes in it with the holes in the hitch take your bolts and pass them through and put nuts on the other side. However, if you do have the tow package set up, it's going to be a little bit different and that's what we're going to be installing today. So we're just going to take our safety chain hooks here, line them up as well, and pass our bolts through. Take our bolts, push them through, and then we can move over to the other side where our bolts come out. Our bolts come out, we're going to take another safety chain hook there, slide that on, and we're going to take our electrical bracket. So you'll attach your seven-way bracket here just using the bolt, flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. So just loosely install those. Take this, slide it over those bolts, then we can get our included lock nuts started hand tight. We'll come back with a three quarter inch socket and wrench and snug everything up. And don't forget to come back with a torque wrench and tighten the hardware down to the amount specified in your instructions. Now we can reinstall our small panels here, the opposite way that we removed them. So these will just kind of line back up, pop into position. And when we reinstall our plastic fasteners, you want the head of the fastener to be pulled out. So you can kind of hold it like that, push it in, and push the head down. I'm gonna do this on the other side as well. To get our wiring in place, first thing we need to do is locate this factory grommet here on the passenger side. And this is what it's going to look like. And what we need to do is very carefully drill a hole through there. That way we can pass our wiring through. Before you do that, you want to check the other side, make sure there's nothing that's going to be in the way, which I've done. So we'll take our drill bit, just very carefully run it through. So now that we have our hole drilled, we can take our wiring, the end that goes to the outside, and we're going to pass it from the inside to the outside of our vehicle through that hole. So that hole that we drilled located right down in here, I'll go ahead and pass that through and then show you what it looks like once I have it done. So here on the outside, there's where our wire passes through the grommet. And what you're going to do is simply just pull that through until we have enough length. So here's how I routed our wiring. Just went up and over the hitch and then down along that side there. And I just kind of push it up through this panel where it drops down right here. 
That way we'll have enough length to get everything bolted up to our seven way bracket there. That being said, what we're gonna do is take our wiring and we need to strip back the ends of the insulation. So get some wire strippers and we'll strip back maybe about that much on each wire. So here's what our wires look like once they're stripped back. Then we can grab our seven way plug. And if you look, we're gonna have two Phillips head screws on each end. So we need to pull those out. So we'll take our screwdriver and back those out. Come back with your screwdriver from the back side and kind of push it out like so. With that out, we can take our wires and run them through our seven-way housing. So kind of push that back some to give us some room to work here. Then what we're gonna do is get all of our wires hooked up to our terminals here. So we'll start with this one right here. That's going to be for our ground, so our white wire will go into that. The one next to it will be left turn, so our yellow wire will go there. This one here is going to be for our tail lights, so our brown wire will go there. This one right here is auxiliary power, so our black wire will get connected there. This one right here is going to be for our right turn, so our green wire will go there. This one is for our brake output signal for a brake controller, so our blue wire will go there. And last but not least, the one here in the center is for our backup or reverse light, so we'll plug our purple wire into that. So the way these work is they're simply just a Phillips head screw. So you wanna loosen them up. A lot of times it's easier to not take the screw completely out. Just back it up like that. And in this instance, that's our ground wire. So we're gonna take our white wire and kind of put a little bend it in, almost like a fish hook. So about something like that. And the way it's gonna get hooked up, so you're gonna kinda of, loop it around our screw there. And then just tighten it back down. So that's how I'm gonna connect the rest of these. Doing it the same way and the orientation that we went over just a minute ago. So here's what our wiring looks like once it's all hooked up. Once we have everything connected, I'm gonna take some dielectric grease, which you can pick up here at E-Trailer, and really just coat all those terminals. That's gonna help protect them from corrosion or anything like that. Now what we can do is slide it back into our seven way housing here. You can see that the notch there is on the bottom, just kind of for a reference. And that's sitting nice and flush. So once you have it like that, we can simply reinstall our screws here in the side. Once we have those tight, we can move here to the set screw and just snug that down. That just puts a little bit of pressure on the wire and prevents it from kind of getting pulled on. Now that we have it set up like that, we can come up to our bracket and get it mounted. We're gonna take the included bolt 
and then just simply run it through our bracket on all four corners. So we'll have it like that. I'll get one of the nuts started hand tight. Do that for all four corners, and then I can come back once they're all in place and snug them down. Now we're gonna be working back inside of our vehicle over here on the passenger side, right in this area. So we need to unravel our factory wiring right here. There was some tape on it and it was kind of pushed against the side like this. And I just peeled that tape off that way we could work with the wire. So what we're gonna do is take our new wiring harness and we're gonna grab the green wire and that's gonna get connected to the green wire with a blue stripe here on our factory wiring. So this will be for our right turn. And the way we're gonna do that is with these included quick splices. So we'll take our green wire here and I'm just gonna kinda push it into the quick splice. Like so, take our green wire with the blue stripe, push that down into the quick splice as well. So it'll look like that. And then we can close this up. And what you wanna do is take a pair of pliers and we're gonna pinch that down. And that's going to connect them two wires together. So that's how it'll look once you have it crimped down. So the next wire we're going to be working with is this gray wire with the purple stripe here on our factory wiring. This is going to be for the running or tail lights or also the marker lights. And the wire that we're going to connect to that will be this brown wire from our new harness. One thing I do want to mention is that the red wire will not be getting used. So I just kind of bundled that up and taped it up out of the way. Now with that being said, what we need to do is take our yellow wire and our white and black wire and those are simply just going to get ran kind of underneath this panel you can see where they come down through there and that's because the yellow wire is going to need to go over to the driver's side and our black and white wire are going to need to go over towards the driver's side as well and eventually get hooked up to the battery so what i did is i went ahead and routed our yellow white and our black wire. And I just ran them along this factory bundle of wires here. I need some zip ties to secure everything. But I brought them right up. At this point, I left the black wire right here because this will get hooked up to the positive battery terminal in a few moments. The white and the yellow wire continue to run. Just back along through here so they go just right behind our battery. Right here at this point, I separated our white wire. So again, in a moment, we're gonna hook it up to this ground stud. The yellow wire continues on underneath this into our opening right here. And I hooked this up the same way we did the other side. I simply just used one of those quick splices and took our yellow wire and spliced it into the factory green wire that has a blue stripe. So you put the quick splice on there and crimp it down. Now moving back to our white ground wire, what we're gonna need to do is strip back the insulation. We're gonna take the included terminal. It's gonna slide on over it. Crimp this down. Make sure 
sure it's nice and tight so we get a good connection. And we're going to hook that up to this stud right here. So that's a factory ground. So we're going to remove that nut or just loosen it some with a 10 millimeter. You could take that terminal and just kind of sneak it in underneath the nut there. So once that's in, you can go ahead and tighten it back down. Sometimes you may have to kind of hold that in position. You tighten that nut, it wants to spin a little bit and you don't want it to come out from there, so. So now we can move over to our black power wire. So I strip back the insulation a little bit and this is gonna get connected to the included fuse holder. Before you do this, make sure that the fuse is not installed. That's the last thing we're gonna do once we have everything hooked up. So it comes pre-attached already with these terminals, which is nice. I'm sorry, these connectors. And we're just gonna slide the bare end of the wire into the butt connector. Crimp it down. Let you pull on it to make sure the connection's there. And then if we come over to our positive battery terminal, lift up on the cover, we're going to have a nut right there. And we can remove that nut using a 10 millimeter. And take that off. Slide over our ring terminal and then just reinstall that nut. And close up our cover. So I went ahead and just used a zip tie just to help clean up our install look a little bit. And now that we have this all hooked up, we can take the fuse and push it into the holder. Now what we can do is secure our module box. So I'm gonna use the included sticky tape. So we'll peel off the backing paper. You wanna make sure this surface is nice and clean so you can like rub it down with some alcohol or something like that, which I've done. And you're just gonna push it to there. Peel off the other piece of paper and where I'm gonna stick it is right here on this plastic panel. It's nice and clean and flat and out of the way, so I think I, it ought to work out pretty good. So I kinda of just tuck everything down in there and push it in place. So I went ahead and just used some electrical tape and some zip ties just to kinda of bundle up all of our wiring and clean up our install look. And this is how it turned out. Now back outside where we ran our seven way wire through that grommet that we drilled out. What you're gonna wanna do is take some RTV sealer and just seal up that hole there. That way everything's nice and tight. If you need some of this RTV, you can pick it up here at E-Trailer. So now we can grab our little plastic panel here and reinstall it. So this will line up with this bracket here on the hitch. And originally this was held in place by five push pin fasteners, but we're only going to be reinstalling these three here in the middle. So push in and lock it down. Don't forget to plug it back in. Now we can grab the center panel that we removed earlier and we're gonna to need to trim it out. So I put some marks there where we need to cut. And there is a diagram in the instructions which you can follow. This is relatively thin plastic. If we flip it over though, around this area, you can see there's some metal. So I'm gonna use a Dremel tool to cut it out. You could probably get away with a pair of 10 snips or something like that though. With that being said, we'll go ahead and trim that out. And 
Then if you want to, you can always come back with a file or some sandpaper, something like that, and clean up these rough edges. Now with an extra set of hands, we can reinstall our fascia. Now you don't want to forget to plug in that connector that we disconnected over here on the passenger side. And Then we can simply just re-secure everything the opposite way that we removed it. Now what we can do is go ahead and test our wiring out. That way we know it's functioning properly. That being said, we'll use our left turn, our right turn, our brake lights, our running lights and as you can see in the top right we have our 12 volt auxiliary power as well and that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the stealth trailer hitch receiver with the towing kit on our 2020 bmw x5